Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warplanes with the Mighty Jingles. Now, yeah, this is obviously welcome back to World of Warplanes. This is not the first preview I have done of World of Warplanes. Now that the NDA has been lifted, it's still in closed beta, but we are allowed to show you what the game is like. And I do realise that my first World of Warplanes video was not very well received by the World of Warplanes community, who uh, didn't like the fact that I wasn't very keen on their precious little baby. Um, unfortunately, all I can really say in response to that is, tough shit, get over it. However, we're back. There has been a new patch for World of Warplanes. This is version 0.4.2, and there have been a lot of changes. So, it's only fair to give the game another crack of the whip and see what's changed. And there have been a lot of changes. Uh, not all of them immediately obvious. There have been various changes to the flight dynamics of certain aircraft, uh, speeds have been changed, flight handling performance has changed, and so on and so on and so on. But the most obvious changes have been to uh, the interface and the equipment that you can fit to the aircraft. So, let's have a quick look at that. And those of you who play World of Tanks will immediately recognise the sort of thing we're talking about here. They've introduced new ammunition belts. So these are for my 20mm cannons here on my uh, on my Zero. By default you have an armour piercing ammunition belt which does 4.88 to 9.38 damage. Or you can pay for an incendiary belt which does the same damage but also has a 10% chance of setting the aircraft on fire. Or you can pay for a general purpose belt which does slightly more damage and also has the chance of setting the aircraft on fire. So that's for the 20mm cannons. You've got the armour-piercing 7.7mm guns. You'll see exactly the same thing. Um, outboard weapon, which is basically the wing, uh, the bombs under the wings. Resupply automatically buttons. Repair automatically. This is all looking very familiar. Consumables. Oh, what's this? Yep. First aid kit. Fire extinguisher. High-octane gasoline. So, very, very similar, and it shouldn't come as any surprise because World of Warplanes and World of Tanks are supposed to share a lot of similarities. That's the whole idea. So, that's the uh, service screen. If you go to the modules, and previously this was just where you decided which engine, which airframe, which weapons you were going to fit to the aircraft, and that's all still there from the stuff that you've researched. But now, oh, what's this? Additional equipment. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Limited selection. Obviously, if you do this in World of Tanks, there are about nine or ten different things you can fit in your three equipment slots. But here we've only got the three at the moment. I'm sure there'll be more in the future. Improved reflector sight for 10% firing accuracy. An aircraft dope for 10% top speed. And reinforced wooden covering, wooden covering for 10% to resistance on the wings, fuselage and tail against damage. So, all good stuff there. Um, now... One other thing that they have done is that they have uh, reduced across the board the amount that it costs to repair your aircraft. So you're not spending all your money on fixing aircraft. Um, can, and they've basically done that because people are going to be not just paying for repairs to the aircraft, they're going to be paying for you know different ammo loadouts every time they take it up, consumables every time they take it up. So there's a whole rebalance to the economy gone on as well. So, you know, all good stuff. Um, I haven't noticed any new aircraft in the tech tree, but that's not the focus of this patch. This patch is all about uh, refining the flight controls, um, adding consumables, adding equipment, um, making the aircraft perform better in the air, not just um, statistics-wise, but making the controls more responsive. This is this this patch is all about, as well as you know things like that and things like that come on that there we go it, it's all about making the gameplay experience smoother so to what degree have they succeeded in that well the only real way to test it is to have a battle so let's give it a quick go now the first thing that you have to bear in mind is that this is a closed beta right not just anybody can play it so there is a much, much smaller pool of people available for the matchmaker to choose from. So don't go crying about the kind of games the matchmaker puts you into. If there are only 30 people queuing for a game, you're going to get into whatever game you're going to get into. 
Now, graphically, it doesn't look that different to when I first looked at it. So it's kind of disappointing, but bear in mind, that is not the focus of what this patch has been. This patch has been all about improving the responsiveness and the smoothness of the combat. And here we go. Now, I do, despite having said that, um, it does actually relate to the smoothness of the combat. And, and it's tied into the graphics as well, because I have a pretty powerful PC. Um, my graphics, I mean, I've got 12 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, quad-core CPU, it's an i7 CPU, and a GTX 680 graphics card. And my frame rate never went above 44 frames per second. And once I actually got involved in air combat, it dropped down to below 20 frames per second. And that's, that's just not acceptable. And that is going to affect the way you you play. Because it's going to affect your performance. So no amount of smoothing out the responsiveness of the controls is going to compensate for having a lousy frame rate. This, on the other hand, what you're seeing now, if you press left shift, now, you know, I don't even know if this is a new addition. Uh, they may have already had this in the previous version of the game, in which case I'm going to look pretty stupid but this is a really good idea. Hold down left shift and it puts you in strafing view and it basically puts the camera below your aircraft and gives you a better view of your bomb site. Now this is something that War Thunder could definitely use when you're in your high altitude bombers. So that's a really good, really, really good idea. And this is something else that I noticed. Um, while you, you have to... <laughs> right, I suck, okay? <laughs> Let's get this out of the way right now. I am no good at playing this game. And yet, you, you know, you, you don't need to be a world-class singer to know when somebody can't sing. And you don't need to be a great PC pilot to be able to judge the way a control system works. And I definitely felt that whatever work they've put into the control system, particularly mouse and keyboard here, is paying off. Because while I definitely sucked in this game, no question about it, um, I was the last one left alive. I was able to, if not outfight, then outmaneuver the enemy aircraft in to a degree that I just had not been able to do in previous versions of World of Warplanes when I'd been flying random battles. So that's a good thing. I wish that they just... It definitely needs more optimising though. You know, the graphics remind me, I don't know if anybody remembers a company called Nova Logic. Back in the 90s they were doing, uh, funnily enough, um, aircraft and tank games, <laughs> quite appropriately. Um, Armoured Fist, Comanche, you know, games like that. And they used a technology called voxels, which were basically voxelated pixels, 3D pixels. Um, and, and this really reminds me of the way the Nova Logic games looked. They weren't really true 3D, but they kind of managed to fake it very, very convincingly. And this is quite literally the first game I jumped into uh, in patch 0.4.2. And I did better, <laughs> even though I sucked, didn't do very well at all. I did better in this game than any other game of World of Warplanes I've ever played. And I do definitely feel that they're onto something with this control system. Um, you know, if a noob like me, oh, there we go, there's the result. Not fantastic. Well, it. No, you know, I sucked, <laughs> no two ways about it. But I felt like I was getting somewhere, and that's not something I've felt any other time I've played World of Warplanes. It's, um, it's difficult to know what to say about World of Warplanes in th at this stage of development. Mindful of the fact that it is still in closed beta, it's, it's, no, it's nowhere near at the same level of development as, as War Thunder is, and so it's not really fair to compare the two in that respect. 
But I, I, I do have to say this about it. I'm, I do kind of like what they've decided to go for with their mouse and keyboard controls. It's completely different to... Uh, superficially similar, but in, in practice it's completely different to the mouse aim system that people use in War Thunder. You know, those, those of us who aren't using joysticks anyway. Um, it is comparatively simple using the system they have adopted here in World of Warplanes to pull off the kind of manoeuvres that in War Thunder would probably require you to be using a joystick. So that's a good thing. However, it does come with a price. And those of us who've not really flown with a joystick before, and for example have bought a joystick and tried to play War Thunder with a joystick, um, will be familiar with being able to control the aircraft to a much greater degree than previously possible with mouse aim, but finding it really bloody difficult to get the guns pointed at the target. And, and that's the price you pay for having that level of control with a mouse aim system in World of Warplanes, in that it's far easier. Um, with some practice, uh, I must you know add that caveat, you do have to practice at it. It's not in, immediately intuitive. But with, a, with some practice, you are going to find yourself pulling the kind of manoeuvres in World of Warplanes that are going to be difficult to pull off just using mouse aim in War Thunder. So that's good. Um, but it's correspondingly more difficult to get the bloody nose of the aircraft pointed at the target. So that's the trade-off. But again, it, it's something that you need to practice at. And I do find that quite surprising, considering this is a wargaming product. It's nowhere near as pick-up-and-play as World of Tanks is. Um, any idiot can play World of Tanks, and one of my common complaints about World of Tanks is that any idiot does play World of Tanks. Well, War Thunder is very pick-up-and-play as well. You can, you can load the game up, you can download it, install it, press the play button, and within minutes be shooting down enemy aircraft and having a great time. That is not going to happen in World of Warplanes. And I think it's very brave of them um, to make that design decision because you have to practice with even, you know, forget about about joystick. <laughs> Joystick's going to be an order of magnitude harder and more rewarding. But even just simple mouse and keyboard, mouse aim here in World of Warplanes, you have to practice to get good at it. Now, you could say that's a good thing. You could say it's a bad thing. Either way, it's definitely a brave thing that they're doing. Um, this game is going to turn off a lot of casual players. But if you stick with it, you're going to get good at it. Um, so that's, you know, that's that's definitely a tick in the box. I have to definitely, you know, credit where credit's due. Stick out this game, you're going to get good at it relatively quickly. And you're going to be able to pull off the kind of manoeuvres that you wouldn't dream of being able to do in War Thunder using mouse aim in War Thunder. So that's a good thing. However, it still looks like a dog's breakfast. Um, it's still horribly optimised. The frame rates... Um, on my PC, considering how powerful my PC is, the frame rate is unacceptable. However, there's a however to my however, it is still just in closed beta. Um, I definitely do feel, however, God, there's a lot of howevers in this video. <laughs> um, I don't believe that they are ever going to get this game engine as well optimised as Gaijin's War Thunder is. Um, I'm sure that there are still plenty of things that they can do to make it perform better, but I, it's just, the, the two game engines are just worlds apart. They just are. Um, I'm certain that they're going to, you know, be able to add more polish to it and make it run smoother and make it look better and so on and so on and so on. But it's apples and oranges. Um, they're, they're never going to get this game looking as good as as War Thunder. End of, end of story. If that matters to you, then you're going to be playing War Thunder. Simple as that. If that doesn't matter to you, I mean, at the moment, the graphics at best look serviceable. And I would probably expect them to be able to polish and optimise to the, the level where you're not going to mind the graphics as much. But this is never going to be as pretty a game as War Thunder. Just, it, it, it just isn't. Based on what we've seen so far, and considering how far into development it is, um, it still looks pretty rough. And I think that the best they can hope for 
is to have it looking good enough. And, you know, that's the thing about good enough. It's good enough. So, if graphics are what you're after, World of Warplanes probably is not going to be your cup of tea. Um, on the other hand, if, if you want a flight sim, and I'm using the word sim, you know, with caution, um, because War Thunder in arcade battle and World of Warplanes are both very much arcade flight sims. But if you want a slightly tougher experience and something that rewards, how can I put this, something that rewards perseverance and, and, and uh, you know, applying yourself to mastering the controls, um, then World of Warplanes probably isn't terrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm damning it with faint praise here, but I I, I still don't enjoy playing it. Um, but it's that's just me. I mean, and, and and what I'm trying to do here is I'm not I'm not just writing the game off because I don't like it. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of things that are great that I don't like. You know, I never really saw what the fascination was with the Mona Lisa. But I don't deny the fact that it's a great work of art. I'm certainly not saying, I don't like this game, you shouldn't play it. That's not the point of the video at all. Um, I think it has potential. And it can only get better. And as it stands right now, it's it's not bad. And it's still only in closed beta. So, uh, you know, I wish Wargaming the best of luck with this. And I'll definitely keep coming back and, and looking at it uh, through various stages of development. Um... But at the moment, yeah, it's it's not terrible. <laughs> Which is more than I could say about it the last time I looked at it. And, and it seems to be one of those games that if you are prepared to put the hours in, it will reward you with, um, you know, the ability to shoot down lots and lots of enemy aircraft. More so than War Thunder arcade battles are. I think if you want the same level of um, reward to effort, you need to play War Thunder in historical battles, or full real battles, and for that you definitely need well not so much in historical battles, but full real battles just don't even try it without a joystick but I think you can get the same level of reward to effort ratio in World of Warplanes without having to use a joystick just master the definitely more complicated um and more technically demanding mouse aim in World of Warplanes and it really does sort the men out from the boys so there you go World of Warplanes version oh I've forgotten what it's in the title <laughs> oh Jingles you're so crap yes I know um, yeah not quite as bad as I at first thought and definitely getting better and still plenty of room for improvement and i'm sure they will so there you go as always folks watch your six and i'll catch you next time